Hi, this is Mary Lemoyne, and today we'll be doing illustrative math, grade 5, unit 3, lesson 12, represent division of unit fractions by whole numbers. Our goal today is to make sense of diagrams that represent division of a unit fraction by a whole number. All right, so we're going to start up with this warm-up, and we're going to estimate how much is shaded. Well, when I look at this, the first thing I think of is what's going to be too high because I know that this would be too bit much, this would be too much, and this would be too much. I could even say that if I made it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if I made it into eighths, one eighth would be too high, right? One eighth, one fourth, one half. Anything bigger than that would be way too high. What would be too low? Well, I could say one one hundredth. I don't think it's going to be cut into one hundredths. I could say one fortieth. That would mean I would cut the whole piece into 40 pieces. What would be about right? Let me get a different color here. So I think that if I cut this in half and each piece in half, that I would probably get equal pieces. Okay. And so this would be one out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I would think 1 16th about right, but this is an estimate. You might have thought that it was 1 20th, which would be smaller than my piece, right? Or 1 18th. It depends on how you split up your bar or how you saw it. All right. So we're going to be working with these things. These are called tape diagrams, and we're going to continue to work with those in today's lesson. Okay, so let's see if they ask us any synthesis questions on that. Yes. So how is the tape diagram, so this is the tape diagram, the same as the area diagram, and how is it different? Well, both show one-fourth of a whole, and then a piece of that fourth is shaded, right? So this is a fourth of the whole, and then this is a piece of the fourth. This is a one-fourth of the whole, and then this is a piece of that fourth. The tape diagram is long and narrow, and the piece is all vertical, right? It all goes, well, I would say that this one's vertical. This one's vertical, goes up and down. This one is horizontal. The shaded piece in the area diagram is cut horizontally, right here. But my vertical pieces show the fourths. So that's how it's the same, and that's how it's different in my eyes. You may have some different answers. All right, let's go on to activity one, diagrams, equations, and situations. Priya and Mai use the diagram below to find one-third divided by four. This is Priya's diagram. So I can see one-third. Let me pin here. I can see one-third here. So this piece is one-third, right? This piece is two-thirds, and this piece is three-thirds, or they're each one-third, right? And then I can see that this one-third is cut into four pieces. One, two, three, four. There we go. And here's Mai's diagram. Mai's diagram. It is, again, all cut into thirds, so this piece is one-third, and then that one-third is cut into fourths, right? So this is one-fourth of one-third. What is the same about the diagrams? What is the same about the diagrams? Well, they both show one divided into three pieces. They both show a shaded blue piece. It looks like the shaded blue piece is the same size in both pictures, in my and Priya's and they both show one-third divided into four pieces. What is different? Well, Mize only divided up one of her thirds into four pieces, where Priya divided all of them into four pieces, right? Find the value uh, that makes this equation true. One-third divided by four would be one out of how much of the whole, right? So one out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 1 12th. 1 12th. 1 12th. 
Okay? And that's easier to see in Priya's diagram because she divided up the whole bar diagram, whereas my only divided up one piece of it. So I would have to go in and draw those other fourths to be able to see what was going on. Okay. All right, here's another one. Han drew this diagram to represent one-third, one-third um, divided by three. One-third divided by three. So peak. here we go. Let me get my pen back. So I can see that the one is divided into three pieces. And then each of the, the one-third is divided into three pieces. Find the value that makes the equation true. Explain or show your work. So this piece is going to be one-third of one-third, or one-third divided into three. So this is going to be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one-third divided by three is one-ninth. One-ninth. All right, so let's see. Let's talk about this a little bit more. How does Priya's diagram show 1 12th? So she took the bar diagram and she divided it into thirds, and then she divided that third, right, into fourths. So the whole thing she divided into thirds so that she could see that this was one third. And then she took that one third and divided it into four pieces, divided it by four. And then the shaded piece would be the one part out of the whole. So it has to be one twelfth because there are 12 pieces there. Okay, let's see if they have another question for us. Oops. All right, Priya's work. Find the value of the expression to, and explain or show your thinking. One third divided by three. One-third divided by three. Well, I'm sorry, one-third divided by two. I don't know what I saw three there. So I take my whole, and they have already cut it into thirds for me, right? So that's one-third, another third, and a last third. And then she divided one of those in half. So this is half, half. I'm going to have to divide this in half and this in half. So one-third divided by two would be, here's my third, I divided it in half, and I have one piece of that out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So one third divided by two is going to be one sixth. Priya said one third divided by two equals one half because I divided one third into two equal parts, and one half of one third is shaded in. Well, one half of one third is shaded in, right? But we have to think about it out of the whole piece, not just, not just this piece of the one-third, right? So what questions do I have for Priya? Well, why didn't you cut the others into thirds, right? So here's her original. Why didn't she cut this piece into thirds, uh, in half, and this piece, this third, into half? I would ask also, why do you think one-third divided by two is a half? and have her explain that to me. All right, Priya's equation is incorrect. How can Priya revise her explanation? Well, she could change her answer to 1 6 because she could cut the others in half and see that it's one out of six pieces. So she could then see this is one out of the six pieces if she cut the other thirds in half to two equal pieces, and then she could see that it's six, one six. Okay. All right, one third divided by two equals half because that is how much is shaded in. What do you think Priya means? What do you think Priya means? She shaded in half of the third. That's what I think she's thinking, right? This is one half of this third. So she put a half, but that is incorrect, right? So one half of one third would be the same as one half times one third. So that would be one sixth, which is what we eventually get, isn't it? Is anything unclear? If you divide one third into two pieces, the answer is smaller than one third and one half 
is bigger than one third, isn't it? So we could think of it that way. If I took one third and divided it into two pieces, it should be less than a half because a half would be over here. And this is way less than a half. It's less than a third. Are there any mistakes? Yeah, the equation should be one third, one third divided by two equals six. All right. And in class, you could re write a revised explanation if you'd like of what would be the same, um, what would be better. Okay, and then we could talk about that in class. All right, where do we see one-third divided by two equals one-half? Well, we talked about that already. Where do we see one-third times one, I'm sorry, one-half times one-third? And that's what I was talking about before, right? If it's one-third of one half of one half, then it's the same as one third times one half, right? And so one half, one half times one third would give you how many halves? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what fraction of the whole diagram is shaded in? One sixth. And we saw that, didn't we? So we can say that one half divided by two is going to be the same as one third times one half. One third times one half. That's going to be the same thing. How do we know this is true? Because we can work it out, right? Let's go back one and, and say how do we know that's true. How do we know this is true? We can see both expressions in the diagram. They are both equal to one sixth. One sixth. All right, so now we're going to do look for patterns, activity three. So to be able to find one fourth divided by two, I can draw a diagram, right? This is going to be one. I'm going to divide that one into fourths. So let's see, fourths, right? So this is my one fourth. Fourth, and I'm going to, then I'm going to divide each fourth in half, right? Because I need to make it two divided by two. So now I'm going to divide that in two, each one into two, and then I would shade this piece. So that's going to be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one eighth. So I just like in the last one, I could rewrite this equation to be one-fourth times one-half, and that does equal one-eighth. All right, let's try that same strategy with number B. So here we have our whole. I'm going to have to cut it into fourths, so let's do that in blue. So there's halves, and then there's fourths. And then this time I'm going to cut the fourths by three. So I'm going to go back to my pink and cut them into thirds. Right, thirds. All right, so I'm taking one fourth and dividing it into three parts. One fourth divided by three, right? And so I'm going to think about this piece right here, which will be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that should be one twelfth. And we follow the pattern from the last one. I could say one fourth times one third equals one twelfth. And that does check. Okay? All right. Let's look at the last one. Again, I'm going to draw my bar diagram. I'm going to cut it into blue. I'm going to cut it into fourths again. And this time I have to divide it into four pieces. Four pieces. One, two, three, four, four. There we go. And then I'm going to shade in one of those, one of those. So now I have one, and if there are four here, four times four is 16, right? Four plus four plus four plus four is 16. So this is going to be one sixteenth. And again, I can see that as one-fourth 
of one fourth, right? Okay, so how do we find the value of one fourth divided by any whole number? How do we find the value of one fourth divided by any whole number? Well, I can draw a diagram. The, the quotient is getting smaller. That's the pattern. Let's talk about this one first. Sorry, I skipped one. What patterns do you notice? I notice that the quotient is getting smaller, right? One sixteenth is smaller than one twelfth is smaller than one eighth. And that's because I'm dividing it into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay. Number two, how would you find the value of one fourth divided by any whole number? Well, the quotient, I could draw a diagram just like I did. I drew a diagram for each one of those. Um, then I could split each fourth into the number of equal pieces that are represented by the whole number and shade in one of the pieces. Finally, I could figure out how much of the whole I shaded in, which is what we did, right? Nice job. All right, let's talk about this one more time. What patterns did we notice? We noticed that the quotient is getting smaller. One sixteenth is smaller than one eighth. And that's because we are dividing it into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay. The denominator in the quotient increases by 4. I do see that, right? 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. And the denominator in the quotient is equal to 4 times the number you're dividing. So I'm always multiplying by 4 for the divisor. Why is the quotient getting smaller? Well, the quotient's getting smaller because I'm cutting it into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay? All right. All right, one-third divided by three. How does Hans' diagram represent the, exp the equation? Well, I see that Han divided his bar diagram into thirds, and then he split that into three pieces. What part of the shaded diagram does it represent? Well, I can see that there's one shaded out of the whole would be three, six, nine. All right, here's our cool down. Ready? Write a division expression for the shaded region. Explain or show your reasoning. Well, I can see that there's a bar diagram here, and it's cut into, right, one, two, three, four, five pieces. So I'm going to say one-fifth, and we took one-fifth of our diagram, and we cut it into two pieces. So we could say divided by two, okay? So one-fifth, because there are five pieces, and one of those, and one-fifth of them, one-fifth, is cut into two, two pieces. All right. What fraction of the shaded region does it represent? So I could count. I could add dividing each one of these in two. And I think that would be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going to be my denominator. And I have one piece shaded out of that. I could also say that 1 fifth times 1 half equals 1 tenth. All right. That was a great lesson. And I'll see you in lesson 13.